Hey guys, this is Real Dr. Jim, board certified internal medicine doctor, not the neurosurgeon in Korean TV shows. But I'm going to comment on TV shows today. Grace Anatomy, let's go. I have five rules, memorize them. Rule number one, don't bother sucking up. I already hate you, that's not going to change. <laughs> Trauma protocol, phone list, pagers. Nurses pagers. will page you. Answer every page at a run. Right, we got a, a lot of pages down. during the residency. The exactly the same shape of pages. We need to check all the time. B B B B. So it mentioned uh, the residency need to do a forty-eight hours shift. That's very inaccurate. Why? Because in 1984, there is a teenager, 18 years old, named Libby Zone, who died because of the resident's uh, medical prescribing error. Why this residency will make mistake? Because this residency is doing 36 hours shift. Just imagine, you don't have any sleep for 36 hours. So in 1987, in New York hospitals, nobody can do more than 80 hours shift per week. And usually they don't recommend you do more than 24 hours continuous shift. So 48 is too much. Okay, so this is very accurate. The resident room is exactly what you see in the movie. So we don't have any windows and most of the time we don't use this kind of uh, residence room at all because we don't have time. You know, you remember the beep? Yeah, the beep is calling you all the time. You're always on the phone, not in the own call room. Okay, our first patient is coming. Let's see what kind of patient it is. What do we got? Teddy Bryce, 15-year-old female, blue onset seizures. Okay, so this is a 15-year-old uh, female with seizure, generalized seizure. Sweet. IV lost in room, we got a grandma seizing as we descended. I get as you can see, when patient arrived at the hospital, patient still seizing. Why? Uh, according to the movie, it said patient lost the IV line. That's why patient seizing. That is inaccurate. We have the adivan, we can use it IM. We don't need the IV line to give patient the adivan. And the adivan, 2 mg, sometimes 4 mg, will control this seizure. Rectal exam. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to insert my fingers. See, it said fingers. That's inaccurate. Nobody do the rectal exam with fingers. The rectal exam always with one finger. Most of the time, it's index finger. In what situation you may use two fingers, three fingers? That is a GYN situation for the pelvic exam. So another thing I need to say is look at the window behind. You know, that is very, very inaccurate. And because, you know, the HIPAA, the butt, like, exposed to the outside. Just imagine, like, how hilarious it is if the someone just walk by and see this situation. Mom and Dad are here. They gave her a sedative for the CT scan, so she's a little groggy. Will she be all right? Our doctor at home said that she might need an operation. Is, is that true? What kind of operation? She's, um... Well, you know what, I'm not, I'm not that... This is very accurate, you know, as an intern, especially the first day, you know, sometimes when patients, family member ask you questions, it's difficult to answer because you don't know how to answer. Another thing I need to mention here is they give the patient sedative during the CT scan. Uh, it's very common in the clinic because some patients like have photophobia and they can't stay still inside of the CT scan or the MRI. The, we can give some Ativan to calm down the patient and then we can have a good image. Patient have better experience during this image study. Scalpel. Here you can see George is doing the appendectomy surgery for the first day of the residency. That's inaccurate. You know, for the first couple of months, 
the residents in most of the time is just uh, treating patient or do some sutures, some small procedures bedside, not for this uh, surgery. Stay calm. Gotta believe it. You're what are you doing now? Uh, don't forget from a clam. Pinky's dropping. So you see here, the patient's blood pressure is dropping. That's too much, you know. The attending usually will not wait this long to take over. And the blood pressure dropping is a critical situation. Okay. Mr. Jones has chunky veins and he really needs antibiotics. I should start a central line. <gasps> whoa, whoa, whoa. Using the central line for the antibiotics? Are you kidding? This is too much, you know. The antibiotic, usually we can use some uh, ultrasound guided. Uh, peripheral IV line, or you can use the middle line, which can be down uh, on bad side as well. But central line, that's usually for some unstable patient, like the blood pressure is dropping, or some unconsciousness patient, like the coding patient. We will do some central line on the groin area, or sometimes in the neck area. Okay. Are you sure that's the right diagnosis? Well, I don't know. I'm only an intern. Here's an idea. Why don't you go spend four years in med school and then let me know if it's the right diagnosis? Whoa, that's the intern talk to the nurse. That is not the way the intern usually talk to the nurse. Usually the intern is very polite to the nurses because you know the nurses will also give you the evaluation later. And if the nurse wants to give you some trouble, you are always in trouble. Okay, she's full on the rest of the had four milligrams. Cage, Dr. Bailey and Dr. Shepard. The rest of the not working. Phenobarbital. Load her with phenobarbital. This is inaccurate. Uh, phenobarbital is the correct medication for the seizure. That's no problem. But usually when you talk to the nurse, you always need to give the name, the dose, and how to use it. At the same time, the nurse will give you feedback, like Edivan 2 milligram IV. Then the nurse repeat it. You said, okay, give it then the nurse will give it. So in this way, there will be less mistakes in the clinical situation. Heart stop. Heart stop. Cardiac rest. No, 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 that's not the right way. Wait. So usually for the code blue, that means patient's heart stopped beating, okay? So if the EKG is like a flat line, defibrillation is not going to help. What you need to do the first is the chest compression. Chest compression is the first thing you need to know when patient's pulseless. Whenever you see an unconsciousness patient, you always need to check the breathing and check the pulse. In situation like VFib or VTAC, the defibrillator is very helpful. It can bring patient heart rate back. As you may see a lot of uh, defibrillation in the medical TV shows, it is like a miracle thing. It can always bring a heart stop patient back to life. In the real life, it is not true. You always need to think about the chest compression first. If you catch some rhythm like VFib or VTAC, you may use this defibrillator. Still VFib, nothing. Okay, here's right. Patient is now VFib. You can use the defibrillator. Charge again. Oh, patient's pulse is back. Again. That's amazing. But that's only in the TV shows. As you see here, doing residency is very stressful. Just imagine if you do 48 hours, that's too much. Disorder. Now you're saying it isn't? I'm saying that I don't know. Well, what do you think it could be? I don't know. When will you know? I don't have an answer for you for now. So sometimes the doctor don't know the diagnosis. It is common. But uh, usually you don't see, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So most of the time we need to see, I don't know, but I think um, uh, A or B or C could be the diagnosis. And we will do like CT scan, we will do MRI, or we will do lumbar puncture to confirm the diagnosis and we will give some kind of treatment. That's the way we talk to the patient. 
Sometimes we say we don't know, but usually you followed with some explanation and what's your plan. And that way, the family member can be relatively reassured. Just one moment. Um, uh, Kate could need some beauty patches. I know that, but we have to save her life anyway. Okay. Whoa, 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 that's too much. Doing the case presentation in the elevator. Our attendee always told us, be quiet in the elevator because of the HIPAA. You know, the HIPAA protect the patient's privacy. And then that is a very serious issue in the hospital. It's mine, but it's there. It's a hemorrhage. Oh, this patient it's has a brain. aneurysm and causing this bleeding in the brain and causing the seizure. That's a very interesting case. One tap in the right spot. Exactly. Now I can fix it. Say this aneurysm broke, popping up, and then causing the bleeding, and then causing the seizure. So they open the brain to clip the aneurysm. Nowadays, we don't really need this procedure. Sometimes we can use the microinvasive procedure to clip the aneurysm. Less invasive. That's it for the episode one. There is a very interesting case from seizure, then noticed patient have the aneurysm, and which caused the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Very interesting story, and we do have some inaccuracy in the movie. If you like this real doctor react to Grey's Anatomy, please subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the second episode.